New drip. Chapter 20. Let's get some more crumbs. Oh. Right off the bat with the ominous music. I carefully step down the wooden stairs leading down into the basement. Jameis follows me closely. It's smaller than I thought it would be, but it's also not as uninteresting as I presumed. This is no ordinary basement. Bingo is seated in the chair in front of a computer. The monitor's still off. Turns out your parents were villains. <laughs> look at this. It's an entire office. I look around at the damp and dark room. A desk lines up against the wall, holding many stacks of paper and other sorts of files. I mean, they were accountants. They probably got some work done here, away from us. Yeah, but the entrance was sealed. How do you open it? Oh, I didn't. Or at least not on purpose. There's a hidden switch in the kitchen. Managed to knock over a bowl of cereal and voila, hidden switch behind the faucet. And now there's cereal all over the kitchen floor. <sighs> didn't even clean it up, did you? The basement required a hidden switch to access? That's so weird. I don't ever recall seeing the basement in the first place. Hey, bingo. I'm trying my best, but I can't actually recall a basement. I don't even remember the door. Am I crazy? No, I don't remember it either. I think... He looks at all the equipment around the room. I think this was a secret base, and that door was hidden during the times we were here as kids. I scoff at the idea. Our parents were both boring accountants. Who would need a secret room for that? Okay, so no, so they, they don't know. <laughs> they did not know that their parents were supers. It's weird, though, because I just edited the episode where she is at the, um, the secret exit of the palace. She mentioned that Bingo got hurt following his dad on one of his missions. Yeah. So I don't know what that's about, if she thought they were just accountants. Yeah. Well, even uh, in the, the recent episode that we rewatched, they made mention of the parents, and that also gave the impression that they knew that their parents were supers. Yeah. Is that just a, like, writer discrepancy? Or I don't know. Do accountants go on missions? <laughs> But I really can't recall there being a door leading to the basement. Is it true? Was it hidden? The switch to open the entrance also had another switch to conceal it. I think the last time Mom and Dad were here, they rushed out before they could conceal it. Maybe. Why is this room so important? Asks Jameis, who stands, who's been standing near the stairs. <laughs> this cabin was my parents, and we don't remember there being a basement here. They kept it hidden from us when we were younger, but why? Sounds to me like your parents were doing things that children had no business being a part of. <sighs> yeah, accounting is so scary. Can't do that around the kids. <laughs> what if they were doing something illegal? I mentioned my mind going to dark places. Like what? Laundering money? <laughs> when a bunch of money falls out of the cabinet? <laughs> Possibly? I don't know. You tell me why there was a hidden basement in the lake cabin. I will. Once I boot up this PC, it's slow as hell. Bingo complains, angrily pushing a button on the keyboard. I look around the place as Bingo fiddles around with the computer. I spot a cell phone on the desk behind a suitcase. It's one of those older models of flip phone with physical buttons. Oh no! <sighs> An ancient relic. No. Hey Bingo, whose phone is this? Beats me. I guess mom's or dad's? I don't recognize it though. I try to turn the phone on, but of course, the battery has long since died out. Guess I'll have to charge it. Oh right, these older batteries didn't charge with a USB cable eight years ago. They had their own plug. Hmm, where is it? Jameis, can you look for a small black box with a cable running out of it? It should fit in the palm of your hand. My palm is giant and massive. Wordlessly, he starts scanning the room, helping me find the charger. This shit-ass vision? <laughs> Seriously. Still curious about the rest of the room, I take my time looking around. There's a cabinet behind the stairs, too. Just as I'm about to open one of the drawers, something bounces down the stairs. Ow! Eok yelps as he stumbles down the stairs. He's never done the stairs! He crashes against Jameis's chest, who huffs menacingly. Now he danced down the stairs at the mock Oh, no, true. <laughs> Fool. Have you become so incompetent you forgot how to use stairs? I'm sorry, Cap Prince Jameis. Eok apologizes as he pushes himself away from Jameis. Hey, Eok, are you okay? That looked like a bad tumble, I ask of him, worried he may have broken something. Uh, It'll take more than that. Uh, I'm okay. I came here because I heard voices, but I think my foot stepped on something. The three of us all look down at the floor and see that Eok's boot has dug down into the glass covering of a picture frame. Quickly, he lifts it up out of guilt. I bend down to pick up the broken frame and inspect the picture inside of it. It's a picture of my mom and dad, along with Kane's parents. The four of them were really close, and they all ended up working at the same company. 
I'm sorry. It's okay. The picture is still fine, see? Who are they? These are my parents. And they're close friends, Kane's parents. They were all working in the same building when it was set on fire by a group of terrorists. Setting things on fire sounds like someone I know. <laughs> James <laughs> quips staring at Eok. <laughs> on the contrary, Jameis. We did explosions. <laughs> <laughs> we never harmed in Gaiote. They were strategic bombings. I would rather not think about bombings right now, thanks. I suddenly hear the computer whir and the monitor finally turns on. About damn time! Bingo complains as he takes control of the mouse and starts digging through the PC. As I let Bingo do his thing on the computer, I pocket the picture and investigate the rest of the room in search of a charger. Hey Eok, can you help me look for something as well? I ask and then explain what a charger looks like. Eok and Jameis both start shuffling around the various objects on the desk. I walk around the stairs to reach the cabinet, opening up the drawers to see if there's anything useful inside. Just a bunch of files and paperwork. But then one of the files catches my eye. The name Mr. Invisible. That's a superhero name. I take the brown file out of the drawer. It's thin. There's not many papers inside. As I flip it open, I'm greeted by a detailed profile of Mr. Invisible. It includes a superhero picture, which is laughably empty because he can turn invisible, but it also includes a regular picture of him, face visible and all. What the hell? It's got all his personal information noted down too. Where he lives, what kind of day job he does, who his associates were. Hmm. I think you were right. I think their parents are villains. It's were seeming villains. that way. Why would this be here? Even if he were somehow a client for mom and dad's company, there's no way they would need this kind of information. I check the last paper in the file and I feel my heart drop in my stomach. It's a screenshot of a conversation he had with someone. I don't even need to scan it to see the notes taken at the bottom in my mother's handwriting. Runner for Hugh Leo. Oh, so, okay, no. So they're probably okay. not villains, they're investigating. Investigators. They're investigating traitors. A million questions race through my mind. Firstly, is Mr. Invisible connected to Julio? How? Julio is strictly against superheroes. Why would any super work for them? But most importantly, why the hell is mom writing about superheroes and their connection to Julio? Bingo spins around on his chair as he points at the screen. Uh, Track, I'm finding a lot of files on this computer and not one of them has to do with accounting. I place the file back in the drawer, noting the other various files with superhero names on them, and I walk to Bingo to check the PC. Also, peep the fits in the back. I think those are uh, costumes. Yeah, they're costumes. Let me guess, something about superheroes? Yep, it's really bizarre. There's a bunch of folders with all these superheroes, even some that have since vanished or died. Do you think mom and dad were investigating them? It looks like it. He digs through the browser history to see what website they accessed last. Track? Yeah, I see it. The last time they accessed a website is the date of their death. But that's impossible. Mom and dad weren't even at the lake that day. They were with us. It was a normal work day. We both hold our breaths as the web browser loads the last website. Once it's loaded, it's just a simple map of an industrial area, a warehouse specifically. It's an address. The last thing they looked up was this warehouse. What was so important about it? Do they think they went- do you think they went to go check it out? Yeah. I'm not sure. They were with us that day, getting called into work. This warehouse is on the other side of town. Earthling, isn't this one of those Zoetbar zoots you design? Jameis suddenly takes my attention away from the PC. Jameis has pushed the cabinet I was looking through earlier out of the way, revealing a glass case behind it. Inside are two mannequins dressed in what seems like a super suit. They're matching. Are they? <laughs> it's clearly meant for a woman and a man. Bingo pushes me out of the way and presses his nose up to the glass. Ayo, it ain't going anywhere. For real. What the fucking fuck? Those are super suits! <laughs> I don't have any words. All this information is so heavy on me that I sink to my knees. Eok rushes over to me. Thanks, Jameis. <laughs> Drac, are you not feeling well? Just feeling extremely woozy. Eok helps me stand up straight. No way. There's just no way. Mom and Dad had no ability. They were they were normies, just like me. Uh... Mm. You, you're the only one of us who was born with one. Mom and Dad were... Just accountants. But no matter how much we fool ourselves, we can't deny what is right in front of us. A super suit for our parents. I don't recognize the suits at all. I've never seen them before in my life. Uh, I mean, supers would produce more supers. I'm a little confused here. That makes two of us. 
Seems like your parents had secrets they didn't want their children to know after all. That's one big fucking secret. They were vigilantes. Cool. Ah, vigilantes. anti-heroes. <laughs> vigilantes? Like rebels? I like them. <laughs> <laughs> I like rebels. A little. In my world, you have to register as a superhero to be able to openly practice your ability. Oh yeah, true. Vigilantes aren't anti-heroes. They're fucking Batman. But mom and dad weren't registered. And yet they have a secret base and a super suit. They were doing this off-grid. They were vigilantes right under our noses. How the hell did we not see this? Calm down, bingo. For all we know, this is not actually mom and dad. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe someone else? Kane's parents? They were also normies. Well, I don't know. Nothing we know seems to be true anymore. Uh, Anyone who keeps something from their loved ones must have a very good reason to do so. Agreed. It sounds like they hid it, but not with the intention of deceiving you. I run my hands through my hair as the world that I thought I knew spins upside down. The fire my parents died in. It was a terrorist attack claimed by Julio. It seemed random. They were at the wrong place at the wrong time. At least, that's what I believed. But all this evidence in my face is screaming at me that my parents weren't just regular accountants who perished in a fire due to bad luck. Instead, they may have actually been connected to this all. Vigilantes. Superheroes who work in the dark and go against the government. They don't believe in registering and openly advocate for any super to use their ability in public. Not my kind of people. By definition, they would be Julio's number one enemy, who wants to rid the world of supers. I can suddenly feel tears fall down my face. Did did Julio kill them because they dug too deep? Bingo looks at me with a grim expression. He doesn't say anything, but his silence speaks volumes. I... I need some fresh air, I say, feeling the walls are closing in on me. I quickly run up the stairs to flee the basement. I crash down on the couch. My mind is racing, it's hard to calm down and organize my own thoughts. Everything I knew about my parents has been an outright lie. Simple, hard-working normies who perished in a terrorist attack. No, instead I find a secret lair with files on superheroes in their own super suits. I sigh out loud in frustration. I hear steps going up the stairs, and it's Jameis who appears in the door opening. Not saying a word, he slowly approaches me, standing behind the couch. He grips the couch really hard, and I can hear the leather cracking. <laughs> running away. I don't want to lash out at him. Yeah. I'm not running away. I just need a breather. Funny. Looks to me like you couldn't handle the truth. He's not wrong. I mean, yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really it's fucking my difficult to take. I don't need your comments today. I just found out my parents have been lying to me my entire life. I need a moment to gather my wits. Uh, gather your wits or deny reality. Why do you care? I don't. However, if it were me, if I could find out something about my parents to understand why they did the things they did, I would do anything in my power to do so. Give me a fucking second. I'm sorry, but this isn't about you right now. Give me a minute to even process what I just well, learned. Well, I'm so glad that you'd be so perfect. <laughs> After all, both our parents are dead, and the dead can't speak. He says, pushing his hair away from his dark eyes. My eyes soften. Jameis lost his parents when he was very young as well. There must be things he would like to ask his parents but can't anymore, just like I can't ask mine why they lied to me. I don't know why they lied. Then what are you sitting around for? Go find out. I gotta grieve, man. <laughs> for real, give me a second. God, I literally <laughs> just found out. I can't help but manage a tiny smile. Then Jameis starts to leave. Hey, wait, where are you going? It's a train, of course. You can't sit and wait around until you make a decision. Without Which even waiting for a <laughs> reply, Jameis opens the front door and goes outside. He's right. I shouldn't sit around, being angry at the fact my parents lied to me all this time. I need to get to the bottom of this. I get up from the couch and go back down into the basement. Man came to check on us just to say, <laughs> pussy, and leave. Ah, Drac, I found the box. He's holding an old charger. Oh, thank you. I quickly plug it into the nearest outlet and start charging the cell phone. Perhaps we can find out some good information on it. Drac, I've been digging more and more through these files. There seems to have been a clean wipe at a certain point, with some files missing. From what I can deduce, it seems Mom and Dad were definitely part of a group of vigilantes. I still can't believe it. Vigilantes? What kind of abilities did they have? They've never shown an inkling of power to us. I don't know. Maybe they took up the cause despite still being normies? Bingo tries to open a folder on the computer, but a prompt window shows up instead, asking for a password. Oh, there's actual security. Try our birth dates. 
Mom and Dad weren't the brightest when it came to technology. Bingo starts typing away on the keyboard, but both our birthdays are rejected as passwords. Anniversary? Rejected again. Hmm. Seems I'm gonna have to crack it. I'll leave that to you then, I say, and resume my attention back to the cell phone. What kind of device is that? Asks Eok, looking at it with curious eyes. <laughs> Did you read it like that? <laughs> oh no, it's just how it came out. We call it a cell phone. It's a communication device. It's a very old one, so I'm charging it up with power so I can turn it on. A communication device from your parents? I'm not actually sure. I don't recognize it. The phone's charging light finally lights up, indicating it's got enough power to turn on. My fingers immediately hold down the on button. The screen flashes with the logo of the phone. Eok looks on in amazement. I'm hoping there's no pin code on this, otherwise I wouldn't know what it is. Luckily, the phone boots up without asking for a pin confirmation. I search through their text messages, but it's empty save for a single message. On my way. The number is not saved as a contact, so I don't know who it's from. The date of this text message is... My eyes flutter downwards. The date of their death. Burner phone. Along with the last usage of the computer, Mom and Dad were definitely here the day they died. Perhaps the message came from Kane's parents, who said they were on their way to the office? That would make sense, at least. They're dead, too, so their phone number would be out of service. Or someone else may have gotten it. But I end up calling the number anyway. It, it's ringing! I wait as the ringing fills my ears, with the breath stuck in my throat. With my breath stuck in my throat. I expected to hear a message saying the number was out of service, but it turns out it's still in use. Someone picks up, but it's silent on the other end. H hello Immediately, the line disconnects. Oh. Huh? Were you calling someone? Someone picked up. And they know that you're not the person who's supposed to be using that phone. Who? I don't know. There's no name saved with the number. But they sent a text message to mom and dad on the day they died. Bingo's eyes turn serious as he realizes the gravity of the implications as well. Call again! I redial the number. It goes straight into an automatic message that the number could not be reached. They turn their phone off. So it is a person, at least. I nod at him. I may not have heard anyone, but someone definitely picked up and got spooked as soon as I spoke. I check the contact list in their phone, but as expected, it's empty. Looking at the call history, it's a bunch of calls to the same number I made just now, including one made on the day of their death. They more than likely have a code word. Yeah. Oh, I noticed another number that was called before. However, when I try calling the number, it is out of service. There's nothing else of interest on this phone anymore, and I close the phone with a snap. Done looking through the communication device? There wasn't much on it, just dead leads. I'm still working on the computer. I may have to write my own program to hack it. Might take a day or two. Hey, what if I go to that warehouse? That would be a horrible idea. Yeah, it was the last thing they were looking at after all. Maybe we can find something there. Bingo doesn't seem to think it's a good idea, though, having this grumpy expression. Did you forget you're under house arrest? Oh, yes, I totally did just now. Besides, I can see just from here it's an empty warehouse. Besides, <laughs> it's been eight years. It may not even exist anymore. Well, don't you want to find out? Of course I do. Let's dig through everything we can find here before we start breaking any rules or contracts. All right. Well, he's got a point. There's a ton of things to sip that... There's a ton of things to shift through in this basement. All right, I'll look through some more files, I say as I start walking towards the cabinet. I'm about to ask Eok for his help to find anything that looks interesting, but I realize he can't read our language, so he's not much use. Why don't you go train with Jameis? We can take it from here. Eok politely bows in front of me. Will do. Good luck on your search. Thanks. Nighttime. My search through the basement was more or less the same. A bunch of files on superheroes and other people. It's got addresses, occupations, pictures, known associates, etc. They were really doing their research on these people. I recognize half of them, superheroes that were quite prolific eight years ago. Some of them have since vanished, never to be seen again. Most speculated that they simply retired and led a quiet life pretending to be a normie. But there were also a lot of files on regular people, and those had a lot of notes that they were connected to Julio. I had to take a break from all this information, so I went ahead and started working on Jameis' super suit. Or, well, his training armor, as he likes to call it. Bingo is still busy trying to hack the password on the computer. I briefly wonder if I should let Kane know about all this. But even I have a hard time wrapping my mind around it. Kane would freak out. Oh, what? Boy is impulsive. He would be having a bad time. My parents, vigilantes. Who could have known? A day later, I wake up thirsty and end up going to the kitchen to get something to drink. 
I've not been sleeping very well due to lying awake at night because I can't stop thinking about my parents. Can we please get a chunk with Jameis here? We need please. A chunk. This the last time we interacted with him in this kitchen was not a good time. <laughs> Someone else is in the kitchen with me. Oh, jump scare. Well, hello. <laughs> Man, just don't <laughs> like clothes. <laughs> <gasps> hmm, naked again, I see. I muse out loud when I see Jameis's bare back rummaging through the fridge. I'm not naked, I have shorts. <laughs> Seems he had the same idea for a midnight drink. Or snack. And of course, only wearing underwear. Oh! <gasps> what? It's purple. Oh, his underwear? It's black and purple. Ooh, hi. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I try to control myself as I notice he's wearing the alien printed underwear. I can't just burst out into giggles. With a huff, he turns around to face me, a glass of milk in his hand. Hey, let me introduce you to this thing called chocolate milk. Ooh, he's a milk drinker. <laughs> you know he got strong bones. Them bones. <laughs> Stop showing up unannounced and I will dress myself decent. You never know when you somebody- You in my house. Yeah, <laughs> you never know when someone's gonna pop out of their room. You in a public space, my guy. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. <laughs> or you could realize there's other people living here besides yourself. Just a thought. Does it bother you that much? No, mm. Nah, if you want me, I could start making comments about your booty cheeks, but like, yeah. You know. I could start matching your energy. <laughs> oh, 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 hello. I know oh, what you're wow. Oh, it feels awkward, does it? No, no it doesn't. Think so. She's it sure it. doesn't. Not really. You have a nice body. I mentioned casually eyeing him up and down. Rare. Hello. Rare. Oh. Jameis raises both his eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he feels self-conscious all of a sudden. You finally did. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? What other meaning could it have? You're being intentionally unclear. I'm just saying you're not bad to look at. I raise up my arm to quiet him before he can speak. <laughs> <laughs> And before you start saying I'm seducing you again, let me explain that a lot of humans on Earth would say you have an ideal body. I'm unsure why I'm getting all technical on him. It's weird to admit he looks... nice. Attractive, even. I have an ideal body? Yes, you do. But I'm so out of shape. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, well, to a lot of people... Of course I have an ideal body. I must work at it every day to perfect my training. Mm. Well, you've definitely been doing that constantly. How is my armor coming along? I step closer to him and take the glass of milk out of his hand. He doesn't complain or pull away. <laughs> <laughs> Slower than I'd like. As I take another cup out of the cabinet, I set them both down on the counter and pour in some chocolate powder, stirring it gently and throw it in the microwave for good measure. Oh, he didn't have a glass of milk. He had the, the whole fucking carton. What with finding out my parents were vigilantes, I haven't gotten much work done. Oh. Are you still investigating that? The O that he just let out <laughs> did things to me. It reverberated in my A brain, later searching my for heart, VA. and my soul. I've look. I've already said whoever voiced this man has a gorgeous voice. It almost sounds like he's interested. As much as I can, searching through their files, what they were doing, who they were talking to. Your world is very odd. How come? The microwave beeps. The hot chocolate is done. I remove it from the microwave and hand one cup over to Jameis. Careful, it's hot. He takes a small sip, seemingly enjoying the taste. You said people cannot use their powers in public. They have to hide. Why should someone powerful have to hide themselves? They should fear them. They do. I drink some of my hot chocolate before answering. I mean, I agree with you. I don't think we should have to hide it either. But I don't want people to fear me. Hmm. Yes. You're not especially fearsome. He agrees as he blows on the cup of hot chocolate to cool it down. You're not very scary. Hey! I can be fearsome if I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'll pounce you. Ooh, I am shivering I sure in my will. undergarments before you. <laughs> I may not be physically intimidating, but I am a force to be reckoned with when it comes to a battle of wits. I can play a mean chess. <laughs> what are you going to do? Annoy people to death with your incessant talking? Ah! Boy, you like the sound of your voice way more than anyone else I know. <laughs> Don't make me whisper in your ear again. <laughs> Don't make me teach you what spanking is. <laughs> Seems to work on you. <laughs> no! <laughs> You're annoying. Yes, but I'm still alive. Am I annoying you right now? He closes his mouth, his eyes softening as he looks down at the counter. No. A simple answer, yet it suddenly makes me speechless. 
I didn't expect him to say that. Uh, you like our, our back and forth. Oh, he does. Get some rest. You look like you haven't been sleeping. Yeah, do, uh, do, uh, do, uh, <laughs> yeah, do, 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 try that again? Get some rest. You look like you haven't been getting sleep the past couple of nights. He says, suddenly turning away from me, taking his cup with him. Thank you for the hot chocolate. Is all he says before he leaves His very baby's the first thank you. He's learning. I lean my elbows on the counter, my fingers wrapped around my cup, suddenly deep in thought. I didn't think it was obvious that I wasn't sleeping very well. I finished the rest of my hot chocolate. This wasn't so bad, running into him at midnight, having an actual conversation. After my late night chat with Jameis, I managed to actually get some sleep. It's Bingo who wakes me up to tell me to come down into the basement. Did you finally unlock it? Yes, I did. He boasts, looking a little like he's had 10 cups of coffee. I eventually had to brute force it, which took a considerable amount of time, but it's done. I can see the folder and it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> I hunch over the desk to look at the monitor. What was so important it had to be hidden? It's a single picture, a picture of someone on a terrace drinking in broad daylight. What? What is so special about this? Bingo enlarges the picture so we get a better look at the person in the suit. Oh, that's Kane's dad. Sporting that famous red hair, I finally recognize him as well. It's been so long since I've seen him, but that's definitely Kane's dad, Benjamin. Was he a vigilante too? Could be. Look, there's another person behind this bush that he's drinking with. Hmm. Can you see who it is? No, those stupid plants are in the way. Well, can't you zoom in and enhance or something? That's not how it works, babe. Bingo narrows his eyes at me, giving me this stupid look. <laughs> zoom in and enhance. What the hell do you think this is? Some movie where we can magically find out a person's face because it was reflecting on someone's eyeball? <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> no, I can't create pixels out of nothing. Okay, geez, I get it. I was just making a suggestion. A stupid one. A very dumb one. I take a picture of the monitor with my own phone, so I have a copy on hand. Bingo closes out on the picture and checks out the folder one more time, but it really is a single file in there. Bro, the amount of pixelatedness from taking a picture of a screen. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> I don't get it. Why go through the trouble of protecting this picture? I think... Whoever Kane's dad was drinking with was a very important person. It has to be. Maybe he was undercover and trying to gain the trust of someone in Julio. Maybe that's why the folder was protected. We should tell Kane. All of this, it's bigger than us. It involves Kane just as much as it involves us. No, I agree. We should tell him. Can you let him know? No. <laughs> sure, we'll do. He is my lover, after all. He always picks up my text. Boyfriend calls. with a heart. <laughs> Boyfriend one. <laughs> no, no, no. You've got boyfriend, boy toy, mm. and fling. Sugar daddy. <laughs> I grab the flip phone from the desk, which has been charging all this time, doing nothing. I've tried calling that number a few, a few more times, but it always went straight to an automatic message that the number was not reachable. Yeah, they're, they know that it's been compromised. Why the fuck? <laughs> However, I want to try again. I dial the number one more time. It rings this time. My eyes widen. It didn't go to an automatic message. The ring stops. Someone picks up. Again, there's no greeting, nothing. Just silence. Who is this? The line disconnects, just like the last time. Gotta work smarter, not harder. Ah, they hung up again. What was that about your wits? <laughs> <laughs> Dialing the number once more, I hear the automatic message again. Figures. Someone is definitely on the other end and avoiding a call from this phone. Who is it? It's driving me nuts. Bingo, can't you figure out who this number belongs to? You think I haven't already tried? It's been scrubbed clean. Secure line. I can't find shit on it. Besides, I'm an engineer, not an investigator. Ah, <sighs> I know. You know, we should really visit that warehouse. Bingo suddenly types in the address in the web browser and opens it up. He turns on Street View so that we can see a rendered image of the appropriate address. There's nothing there, aside from a bunch of rubble. A few years ago, it got burned down and eventually taken down completely. There's nothing there to see. No! I really wanted to visit it and see for myself, but it's already gone? I guess that makes sense. Eight years is a long time for buildings to appear or disappear. Well, I'm gonna keep digging. Find out what I can. I rub my temples with my fingers. So much to think about. Time for a break from all this.